Hey, Josephine. Hi, Landon. How are you? Great. How are you? Doing excellent. Just having, you know, living it up, living life. Yeah. You have a nice background. Look at those cool images. This is Takashi Murakami. He's a Japanese artist. Yes, I've heard of Takashi Murakami. Wait, you own some Takashi Murakamis? Are they I prints? Own a, lot, a lot of Takashi. I mean, if I'll just give you a little, this is just the dining room. What? Uh, a lot yeah we're big fans here I could, yeah but that's but what's really important is your artwork <laughs> so i'm Lennon johnson and i'm with screen picks and i'm here with the triple threat josephine decker she's an actress director and writer and she just created one of the most my actually my favorite film of 2020. oh my um, god really that's absolutely. amazing hands down hands down um, and so how, how, what have you been doing during quarantine? I mean, where are you quarantined and what have you been doing? So you're such a creative, so I know you've, you've been doing something creative. I have been doing something. Well, I'm, I live in Los Angeles and, um, yeah, I've been dreaming up a couple projects, which hopefully knock on wood, you know, crossing fingers will happen, um, someday. Uh, and I've also been deeply preparing the, my film, the sky is everywhere, which is my next, supposed to be my next film, which hopefully we'll shoot this summer. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's tough, but I know yeah. it's going to be great. Um, so what was it like when you first read Sarah's script? I mean, because that script to me is just, it's so in intellectually stimulating. Um, it's a toast to the literary world and to anyone who actually loves the use of words and writers everywhere. So what was it like when you first came across Sarah's script? I think it was kind of, yeah, falling in love at first sight. And I think also then meeting Sarah in person, I was just really blown away she's so insightful she's she's it, it's not just that she's brilliant she's she researches all the time she really you know she practices what she preaches she she goes deep and she did go deep for to make the script she worked on it for about four years before i got my hands on it um and uh yeah i was excited and i was excited at the time you know obviously there were these two pretty stunning female characters of shirley and rose and then there was this mysterious kind of ghost character of Paula who kind of haunts the film and that felt like a real entrance for me I mean I think I felt like I had something to add to the film because sometimes when you when you see a perfect script you're like you know what do I have to add <laughs> um but I think when you when I'm dealing with a script that has like the subconscious so uh so open and and then it's almost there's almost like an open wound in the film of this this other woman um i felt like oh there's something there that's there's cracks you know this is there's a crack that is like breathing that i can go into which is very shirley jackson so very much so and then you did such a great job making the house its own character you made that house its own world the outside of that house was a different world now how did you tackle that i mean that was so incredible. I feel like it should have been in the credits. The house should have said play by the house. Yeah, <laughs> we should have written that actually. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, Shirley's work, the houses really have personalities. The Haunting of Hill House, um, which I'm like, do I have it right here? Should I just read the opening lines? Hold on. Yes, um, yes. Everyone, everyone is, uh, you know, I think most people know this, this work to some degree, um, or they maybe have even seen the Netflix show. Um, that was based on it, but the first lines, no live organisms, not no live organism can continue for long to exist sanely under conditions of absolute reality. Even larks and katydids are supposed by some to dream. Hill house, not sane, stood by itself against its hills, holding darkness within. I mean, it's a pretty good introduction to a to a place, to an inanimate, you know, art piece of architecture. And I think that was really our goal with this was how do you uh, animate this architecture? How do you make it feel like it's breathing and living? And uh, the way we shot it, the inside and the kind of the literal cracks, um, which were all there. Uh, yeah, it felt like we, it was always asking, the house was, the house that we chose was always inviting us to go deeper as well. Absolutely. And then from what I hear, it was haunted or it's haunted. <laughs> oh, right. Right, I forgot that. That's hilarious. That is right. I mean, yes. It never. I. It always. It only just haunted me in a kind way. <laughs> Good. It was just the energy, right? Shirley's energy was supporting your craft. Yes. Very true. Exactly. I think that's how. To, and what was it like to use Liz, Lizzie and Michael and uh, Odessa as your like muses and to get your message out through them? What was? Yeah. That? Well, they're all brilliant and and 
so wonderful and 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 very different as performers and creators and so it was exciting to have them come together i mean i think you know there is something actually lizzie and and uh, odessa were playing such different characters shirley and rose are sort of built to be very different you know shirley is like barely can get out of bed at the beginning of the film and um and is and is just like a wreck and kind of a kind of a wretch also she's just cruel to people and and she's then full virginia wolf she's totally yes it's so she's true <laughs> it's so true she's definitely elizabeth taylor and who's a very virginia wolf full yeah. for sure <laughs> and then um uh and then you know odessa's character rose is supposed is this very bouncy light-hearted uh young woman who seems to be very resilient and kind but then you sort of as the movie goes along you realize that they're not there's there's something very uh connected about them and that these two women are not that different and i think underneath uh i think what what odessa does so well is i think underneath rose is this very um uh you know powerful woman who has thorns as well <laughs> and um and and shirley is uh obviously so complex but i think underneath that there's a real simple love that she does have in her heart for the people around her um and that she actually wants to really be there for them i think that's kind of one of the tragedies of the film so um yeah and in Tr shirley's real life she couldn't you know she had a very hard time i think being there for herself so it's a it's it was interesting to see the ways that that um that these women that you know that that Lizzie and Odessa played Shirley and Rose as people who do kind of torture themselves. So, um, which I think was also fairly normal at the time for women. Although maybe most women didn't even realize how much they were torturing themselves. <laughs> and that's so true, right? And then I think Shirley's work, her literary work kind of had that, those illusions in there. Yes. With the sexism and what she faced during that time period. Yes. Oh, good. You're a Shirley fan. That's so fun oh, to hear. Absolutely. The lottery. Amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, I love literature though. I love the, the word craft behind this and the way that you were able to execute it um, mm. and just portray that in such a way is it's such a, a talent. I mean, it was just really, really impeccable. Oh, thanks. Well, I had really great, you know, uh, accomplices on that journey. And I have to say like Michael, he just did, he did amazing things. I mean, he, he would come so prepared. He's, and, and I think what he does with dialogue is so musical. He has a, he has a real, he can kind of almost dance dialogue. And, and that's Stanley's character was a bit of, you know, Shirley is like the rock around which everything moves. And Stanley was always kind of dancing around her. And I think Michael found such a, a beautiful way of preparing and, and sculpting these, these scenes to be so meaty um, uh, because of that kind of tension between them. And you did such a great job of, you know, showing Rose's transition from the naive hubris girl to a grown woman who understands the harsh realities of the world. And I think mm. that that is a message that resonates with everyone, you know, a coming of age story, but with a little bit more punch. Yeah, yeah. Well, I hope so. I think there's, yeah, exactly. It's, a, it's um, one, it's a weird coming. I mean, I feel like there's a, there's a transformation that Shirley goes through too. I mean, there's the coming of age of Rose and then there's the, then there's the like coming to Jesus or whatever of Shirley of like, who am I? Who do I want to be in relationship to this girl in relationship to my work? Um, which I think is a moral question, you know, uh, that is maybe also at the heart of, in a lot of artists heart when they're creating. Absolutely. And, th and that creative process, again, you know, we look at something, we write something and we think it's great. And the next day it's, it's terrible. And we're yeah. you know, that's just the creative flow. It's just, it's, you know, that's when you have a passion about something, that's just the way it is. Yeah. Wait, do you write, do you write things, fiction do, at all? I do write things. They're not as good as anything you would write. So <laughs> no. <laughs> but I don't do, worry. I I... Write. But if I <laughs> keep watching the work that you do, it probably will inspire me to be a better writer. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It will definitely elevate my language to uh, a dialogue that people will want to ingest. Yes. Awesome. No. Yeah. Well, so, well, that's sweet of you. <laughs> and I'm just going to have one more question because I'm running out of time, but there, you know, watching this, it was so, I love seeing that realness, you know, because we all have those human thoughts and it was like the deepest, darkest corners of the human psyche. And I had to use different, I had to actually use a thesaurus to actually like describe wickedness and like show it. Cause, cause that the elevated language just deserves so much, so many better words because it of does. her script and because of Shirley's words and her intellect deserves such profound praise you know yes. now it was there one scene that you shot or and you were just like oh 
that would be so awkward or wow that like it really you really felt it because the dinner table oh, scenes yeah. got me yeah I mean there were many scenes there were so many scenes that were like oh this is really going well <laughs> um uh you know I think the mushroom scene was really exciting and and terrifying and I think those women really found that mystical poisonous dangerous play um I think uh there was we had a really I remember we had a kind of a big breakthrough in this there was a footsie scene at the dinner table um that that just has this like sensual uh it's like yeah there's a sensuality and then there's also this kind of um mystery between Shirley and Stanley that feels really alive and so I think that one felt like a big breakthrough like we were um I tried to do a few scenes with that we would do a silent take and so the, the first take was silent and I think that was really nice permission both for me and for the actors to kind of go into the body and how how do these people um I think one of the things that's so great about when you have a really strong dialogue in a script is that almost when you take it away uh there's there's so much there because the actors know all of the places to go so it felt like um we just had a lot of fun playing with those um we had a few scenes that we did first takes uh silently the also one when rose and shirley meet in the kitchen in the midnight in the midnight in the, we called it the midnight kitchen uh that um we did some silent versions and it was just it felt uh very alive already yeah, because their body language becomes the character, it becomes the dialogue. And yes. I think that really aids in it because that's all it is. And with her script, it's more, she's more of a, you know, it was a play almost, right? And so you have to really get everyone in there. And I, it just, it came through, executed so well. I can't say enough good things about it. Oh, well, that's so sweet of you. Yeah, I mean, well, I think Shirley herself, she does this thing where she's, there's a lot, there's obviously, she's a, she's a master of language, but there's, she, she creates also this world under the world that's kind of, there's kind of an unspoken thing that's passing between both of the characters and also the characters in their world. And I think that was something that was exciting to explore in our film too, what, what all of the unspoken um, realities and uh, almost like ESPs <laughs> that are happening. Yeah, it goes to the deepest and darkest cor corners of the human psyche. Hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing, but thank you so much for well, taking thanks, time. Landon. It's so good to meet you. I'm so glad Sundance gave it all the praise. And I have no doubt that when it hits streaming networks on June 5th, um, Hulu and VOD, that everyone's going to receive this extremely well because we oh, need thanks. intellectual stimulation right now. And we, <laughs> we do. So I, I need some. Person. I know, right? <laughs> yes. Thanks, so Landon. enjoy the rest of your quarantine. Stay safe. Thank and, you. Uh, I can't wait to see what's next. Where are you, by the way? Are you from, where are you from? I'm from North Carolina. The, the accent's coming through heavy today, I can tell. Um, <laughs> um, so I'm from North Carolina originally, but I'm actually in Los Angeles now. Oh, are you? Okay, I'm from Dallas originally. And okay, so in LA as well. well. Yeah, I spoke to Odessa and she's actually quarantining in Virginia. So she picked up on it real quick. She was like, oh, that's yeah, hilarious. Yeah. That's like, so funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. All right. Well, thanks again, Landon. Have a great day. You too. Bye.